You're listening to Miss Style, Strength, and Grace with Deidre Murphy. This is your one-stop shop for style, fashion, health, and fitness. Deidre's passion is to help empower women to reach their fullest potential, both inside and out. Deidre and her guests will be discussing how to develop your style, health, and lifestyle hacks to energize your day and inspire you to keep reaching higher levels of success. Deidre is a professional fashion stylist, health guru, and Mrs. Washington 2017. It's time to get open and honest with Deidre. Hello and welcome, my dear, to another episode of Miss Style, Strength, and Grace, where we talk about everything from health and fitness to fashion, a little bit of pageantry, and just everything that I think of when I think of the two words, style and grace, especially that word strength, which to me, the word strength embodies everything from health and wellness, but also fitness and just taking care of our bodies, which leads me into today's episode. And I'm going to be real honest with you all. This is probably going to be the hardest episode I've ever recorded. And I'm going to be really vulnerable and really honest with you because the truth is, I've really been struggling and I feel like I would not be who I am and serving you as not only an audience, but, you know, women out there that are my clients and people that see me as this, you know, style and body image woman. And I wouldn't be fair if I didn't share what I've been struggling with. And I'm going to try not to cry, but you know, it's, it is what it is guys. So, or ladies, (laughs) if I do get a little emotional, it's just because I'm trying to share what's on my heart. And, um, the title of this episode of what I'm uh, calling it is, you know, trying to live that six pack life, but I'm no longer there. So I haven't had a feminine cycle in over three years now. So if you've been following along my journey, you may or may not know that, especially if you watch my Facebook lives and my messages um, via video. But it all started when I was struggling with my health and then I wanted to pursue pageantry and get back into that as kind of a way to get my fitness goals going and, and, and push myself. So four years ago, that was when I officially, I guess, lost my very first cycle was when I was starting to lose weight and I was prepping for the first time around that I did Mrs. Washington. And that was the year I did not win or one of the years I didn't win. And at first I thought like, oh, well, once I stop pageant prepping, I'll get my cycle back. And, you know, at first, of course, like I'm a married woman. So I'm thinking like, oh, I'm pregnant. But no, it was just the fact that I started dropping weight in a relatively quick amount of time. So my body kind of freaked out and I stopped cycling. Well, um, I didn't get a cycle back until I had put some weight back on. I had a cycle again for a few months. And then as I started to get back into the pageant prep mode and and thinking I was going to run again for another year at Mrs. Washington, I again lost my cycle and it has not come back since. So wrapping that up, the pageantry story, I eventually won Mrs. Washington, went on to compete at Mrs. America in the summer of 2017. And then I crowned my successor just this very last summer. So in the summer of June 2018 was when I crowned the next Mrs. Washington after me. So like I said, all in all, I really haven't had a period in three years. So sorry if there's, you know, children around or that is an uncomfortable conversation for any of you. We're just diving in. We're going there. And in September, so of 2018, September, I started venturing to a natural path and looking into what's going on because it came down to the fact that I had been stressing out my body for too long and honestly just not eating as much fat and especially omegas as my body needed because I was constantly in that mode of like, I've got to look good for being on stage. I've got to look good for photos. I've got to have chiseled arms, chiseled shoulders, chiseled abs all the time, especially being in the spotlight as a pageant title holder. I constantly was worried about my appearance and overall my body. Um, I had finally gotten to some fitness goals that all together I had wanted for over 30 years, my whole life. And I finally achieved those goals and I didn't want to lose the strides that I had made, but I let my overall health be put on the back burner because of it. And there's a lot of explanation that can go into that. I mean, there's so many reasons why really active females may or may not cycle. 
but mine came down to the fact that a I was obviously still really active and and working out a ton because I wanted to still be on stage ready at a moment's notice but two it ultimately came down to the fact that I was scared of eating fat and I've talked about this on some prior episodes as well but I was scared of fats because I knew if I really wanted to lean out if I cut calories and really lowered my fat intake I could lean out really quickly in in a short amount of time just there's a lot of science behind it I mean clearly that is one way to lose weight is lowering calories and lowering the fat intake. It does work, but it can be detrimental, especially as females on our body, because we need a certain amount of fats in order to regulate our, you know, hormones. Clearly I'm a walking example of that. And I just, I was afraid of fats because I was like, oh, I'm going to gain weight if I eat too much fat and I don't want to, you know, get back to the, where I was, you know, 40, 50 pounds ago. And I want to be able to like what I see in the mirror. So September, back to the story, I started seeing my naturopath. So we started me on a protocol, not only to naturally up my fat intake and some other things that my body's been struggling with, but I also got on some hormone therapy and some ways to help stimulate those hormones again. But in all honesty, I wasn't being true to not only my natural path, but myself and my husband. I was, you know, taking all the medicine and the prescribed routes that she had given me, but I still wasn't eating as not a much fat as my body needed. And I wasn't taking my omega supplements because again, I was scared of fat. So why ultimately am I, was I afraid of this whole kind of journey and process? Well, in the background, my husband and I have been discussing starting a family. Again, this is something I've been a little bit more open about. But in the back of my mind, before I started seeing my naturopath and trying to get my hormones going again and trying to get a f- ovulation system going, I was worried in the back of my head, worried about failure. Because I thought, what if I go down this journey and I fail? What if I try to start a family and I can't? Not only would I feel like a failure as a woman, but as a wife and a partner and a spouse to my husband who six years ago when we first got married, having a family was one of our big goals. And here I was because of what I feel like as kind of my selfish desires, my my need to have the accolades that I wanted by, you know, whether it was pageantry or or whatnot, that that selfish desire, what I was thinking in my head was a selfish desire had ultimately ruined my body and ruined my fertility opportunities. And that wasn't fair to my spouse. And just, you know, if I felt like if I didn't know what was going on or if I didn't know why my body wasn't cycling, then I didn't have to worry about failing. And if I didn't try to fix it, then I didn't have to worry about being a failure and not being able to someday naturally start a family. But then also on the flip side, here I am also thinking, what if I ruin my body? I know that's very shallow to just flat out say, but it's where I was at in my thinking of all this hard work that I've put into finally achieving like the fitness goals Um, that I've always wanted for 30 years, what if I ruin my body by A, trying to either get pregnant or B, finally getting pregnant and then having a kid and then all those things in the back of my mind were for nothing. And this is kind of a side note, but I always am jealous of people's knees because my whole life, my mom, I inherited it from my mama, but we don't have really developed kneecaps. It's what I call a thnee. So if you've heard of a cankle, right, where there's no definition between the calf muscle and an ankle, I have what I call a thnee because it's just kind of thigh and then knee. There's no real separation. And I was so proud of myself because I finally sculpted my legs to the point where I felt like I had knees and I was proud of that. And I liked my legs finally after, you know, 30 plus years of never wearing shorts because I hated my legs. I finally was able to, you know, enjoy the summertime because I could wear breezy skirts and dresses and and shorts and feel comfortable in the hot hundred degree weather and still feel confident in my, my body. So that's a little bit of my side note about my, my knee. So if I'm ever in 
with you in person and I compliment your knees. That's why it's just my little side weird thing. So I kept seeing this in my mind of like, what if, what if, what if, what if I have a kid and then I stop sleeping again and spiral back into that hole of depression where I was at over five years ago. And then not only spiraling into depression, but then taking that out on my family, you know, eventually resenting my child or resenting my spouse. But ultimately the what ifs could seriously go on for eternity, right? We always know that like there's a million what ifs and there's a million reasons to say no. And my husband and I got on a Skype counseling session with our pastor this last fall. We like to do at least like quarterly kind of maintenance counseling sessions with our pastor, which if you haven't listened to the episode yet, we interviewed him. My husband and I co-interviewed Pastor Aaron Chambers. I think it was two episodes ago, maybe three. I will be sure to link that in the show notes because Pastor Aaron is so insightful and I would just definitely recommend to not only listen to that episode, but reach out to him if you personally need counseling or just somebody to stay accountable to, or if you would love a marriage coach, he is fantastic. So this fall, probably October time, my husband and I were virtually counseling with our pastor, Aaron, and I had told him about one of my best friends that had recently shared that she was expecting. And she and I had been long talking about like, oh, we're going to be the girls that like just wait forever to have kids. Like we're going to be the last ones. And it was kind of like, okay, if you hold out, I'll hold out, you know, one of those things. And she admitted to me that she was actually kind of scared to tell me that she was expecting because she was like, I think I broke our pact. Like we were both holding out on having kids and here we are. And I'm expecting. And one of the reasons she was leery about getting pregnant was the fact that she'd had a really debilitating ankle injury a few years ago and lots of surgeries, broke her ankle. So ultimately she was worried that she could even not only bear a child, but then be able to run around and chase that kid when it's in the toddlers or, you know, be able to physically carry that kid once it's born and not have her ankle give out on her. So those was some of her limiting beliefs. And as I was sharing this with my pastor about her sharing her pregnancy with me and some of our previous conversations about being worried about getting pregnant, those kind of things. And my pastor Aaron said, Deidre, what would you have said to your friend if she had told you that she wanted to get pregnant but was scared. And I said, I would tell her, my friend, girl, you're an intelligent, strong, and amazing woman. And you have an incredible husband and a support system. You can do this and you have the people around you in order to do it. And he said, tell that to yourself. Like, girl, you're intelligent. You're strong. You're amazing with an amazing husband and spouse and a support system if you want to have a child, you can do this. So that kind of helped me see things in a different perspective and be more open to going down this path of trying to fix my body and being open to starting a family, whether it's biologically or not. And that was probably October, like I said. Then this last winter came the holidays, clearly. So by December, I've been doing Some of the things that my naturopath had me on, whether it was like the prescription medicines and the hormone treatments, but I really still wasn't following the fat protocol that she was suggesting to me and I wasn't taking my omegas. I would tell my husband that I was and I really wasn't and it still came down to those same fears running through my head, those limiting beliefs. So during the holidays, I was kind of just at this fed up point and I was like, well, you know what? Clearly nothing is working. I mean, and granted it could have been my own fact that I wasn't doing all the steps that my doctor was recommending, but I was like, you know what? I'm just going to gain weight and I'm just going to do it. And it was intentional. I mean, I did go overboard a little bit on the Christmas cookies and probably gained about 15 pounds total of weight after the holidays. Now I wasn't going like completely off the rails, but let's be honest, I was having a few more Santa cookies than I probably should have. And as of right now, I'm about 10 pounds up from my so-called quote unquote, I'm doing air quotes right now, like normal weight. And it was hard, but I figured if the medicine and the prescriptions weren't doing the trick, 
maybe I just need to jolt my system and go back to the weight I was when I did have a period. So after the holidays, after the weight gain, I finally decided to dive into keto living and I was trying to give my body the fats that it's been craving and I started taking my omegas. And like I said, you know, I dropped a couple pounds just because really if you do keto and you do it right, you're limiting carbs and sugar, you're going to lose weight. So I, I wasn't really starting keto to lose weight, but more so to get my hormones going and get my body to jolt back again. And so, yeah, I lost a few pounds, but ultimately I'm still about 10 pounds up from my, again, quote unquote, normal weight or where I'd like to sit at anyway. So I'm two months into keto and I am flat out struggling. It is 2019. It's just the beginning of March right now. And I want to be honest with you all that I'm struggling at how I look. When I look in the mirror, I'm not liking what I see. I'm struggling now that I have inner thigh sweat again, because my thigh gap has now disappeared. It's gone. (laughs) I'm struggling to like what I see when I put on my jeans that I can barely button. But bigger than that, I'm struggling to not self-sabotage this time and not self-sabotage in reverse. So what I mean by that is anytime that I've maybe gained weight the last couple years, I would cut calories, cut fats, and drop the weight because, again, I know the science behind it and I know how my body responds to that. And that would be self-sabotaging in my mind right now because... Yeah. Could I lose the 10 pounds by cutting calories and and my fat intake? Yes. But that wouldn't be getting my body on track to heal, to finally start cycling with a period again and potentially start a family. Sorry. I know I'm getting emotional with you all, but it's just where I'm at right now. And I'm trying to be open and honest because that's what I talk about. I talked about that when I did win Mrs. Washington. I'm an open book. Like, here I am. Here's what I'm struggling with. Here's the things I'm putting them on the table. And if I say that, then I've got to live it, right? So I'm especially struggling right now when I think about all the future things coming up. So this summer, I'm going to be a bridesmaid. And I'm already thinking, you know, will I like how the dress looks when I show my arms in this strapless dress that I'm wearing? you know, we're talking about planning a a warm weather destination vacation. And I'm like, am I even going to like the way I look on the beach? Will any of my swimsuits fit? And will I feel confident wearing them? Or will I just want to cover up and wear a giant muumuu the whole time? (laughs) And especially this is something hard for me to share with you all because I work with women every single day with how they see themselves in the mirror, not just in clothing, but really What are they coming down to in their self-talk? Are they loving their appearance? One of the steps that I lead clients to or through on my very first session with them is we go through an exercise where we list out five of their favorite features. And it could be something as simple as like, oh, I have cute toes, but it could be, oh, I have really great full voluminous hair. But I kid you not, every single woman that I work with struggles to get past three things they love and appreciate about their physical appearance. So I try to be that guide, that coach, that insightful person for my clients because I see them from an objective view. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to put the words in their mouth of what I appreciate with them, but I want them to see it for themselves. And it's always so startling and it hurts my heart. Like it, it hurts internally for me when I'm working with a woman and she can't come up with just five things that she loves about herself. So here I am right now and I'm struggling with all this too. And I'm not, I, I'm sharing with you this with you because I want you to know you're not alone and I want to feel like I'm not alone either. And I, I know if I'm struggling with my body image and my confidence, then I know other women are too. And we are there to help one another, love and support each other. So as I move into kind of the next phase of my podcast today, I want to share the steps that I'm taking personally, and I want to encourage you and challenge you to also take these steps into consideration and do them as well, no matter what you're dealing with. I mean, we're all all always dealing with something, right? Whether you're on a health and fitness journey, or maybe you are trying to lose weight, 
or maybe you're stepping into a new season of life and you're no longer, you know, working on Monday through Friday, nine to five, and you're tr- struggling to find yourself and love yourself and, and see what this new potential is for you. No matter what, we're always dealing with something, or maybe you're dealing with the loss of a loved one and you don't know where to start when it comes to healing. And I know these steps will help you as well. So here's the steps that I'm taking. Number one, being vulnerable. Sharing my deepest struggles with you, hoping to also inspire you as well. And that's why I'm on this episode right now is I'm being vulnerable. I'm putting it all out there and I'm just hoping that I can help inspire you because I know that vulnerability can spark not only inspiration, but connection with others. So I'm hoping that if I'm being vulnerable and you're dealing with something too, whether it is, you know, fertility or body image or weight loss, like reach out to me, let me know. Send me a DM on Instagram or a private message on Facebook or email me and I want to be there for you as well. Step number two is verbalizing. You'll notice these all begin with V. (laughs) So first one was vulnerable. Second one is being verbalizing and voicing what I'm dealing with. So talking about it when I'm considering that self-sabotage, especially with my closest friends, my best friends, and my spouse, my husband, you know, letting him and my friends help me and, and talk through it if I feel like tapping out and just feel like, well, I'm not happy with myself. I'm not happy with my body. I'm just going to self-sabotage and lose the weight. But again, that wouldn't help me get my period back or start a family. And just find somebody to voice your own struggles to. So maybe it's finding an accountability partner. Maybe it's finding a life coach. Maybe it's finding even a personal trainer that you can voice your concerns with and be accountable to that person. And you almost need somebody that you can separate the attachment from because you want somebody that will not only be there to hold your hand, but also to kind of push you as well. So I just want to encourage you to find somebody that you can be vocal and verbalize the things that you're battling with. Number three, still with the V words, is be vigilant. Stay on the path that you're on. Don't give up. It may take a long time, but the end is still there. The goal is still there. And in a way, I wanted to share this in particular. I'm kind of thankful I gained weight because if I would have not gained the weight over the holidays, I mean, yes, I did it intentionally, but at the same time, it's like, who really wants to gain weight? I didn't want to. But by gaining weight, I dove into keto living, which is giving my body the fats that it needs. And I never would have done that. I would have still been scared about fat and taking omegas and eating the way that I've been eating if I hadn't already gained the weight. Because it kind of gave me that open door of like, well, even if you do gain weight, you're already 10 pounds up anyway. You might as well go on full keto living so that way you can get enough fats that your body needs. And surprising, shocking, when you intake more fat, but you cut your sugar and carbs. Again, it comes down to like how your body can adapt and and get into ketosis, but you're really not going to gain weight. So that was again, one of my scare tactics that I was going through in my own brain. And my last step here, step number four is victorious. You will be victorious, even if it means an alternative path. So right now, I know I talked about being vigilant, right? So if you're on a path, keep in mind that vigilance is key because it might take longer than you expect. If you're dealing with, you know, maybe your own weight loss journey, it took maybe five plus years to get to the point where you're at right now. So don't try to have a quick fix. It's going to take more than just, you know, five weeks to get back to where you want to be. Or for me, I was on this journey of constantly being in like that six pack world, trying to stay in that lifestyle for almost four years, lost my period for three of them so far. (laughs) It's going to take time for my body to heal. It's not just going to turn around in a quick fix. It might be six, another six months to a year before I even start to have a a period again. And that leads me again into step number four of being victorious you know, at the end of the day, regardless of what's going on with my body physically, 
I know that my husband and I have alternative routes. We have other things that we can do if I can't physically, biologically, naturally have a child. Obviously, science is amazing right now, and there's so many ways that women can still conceive, whether it's IVF or different hormone therapies or fertility treatments. There's so many ways to still conceive, and if not that, then there's still love in my heart to potentially look into the route of adoption. You know, I've talked about that with my husband before, and we both know we're at a place in life where if that's the route we need to go, if that's the alternative route to get us to our victory or to our goal, we'll pursue that when the time comes. But either way, I know we're going to end up with the result that we want, and uh, it's going to be okay, even if it means an alternative path as well. So I just want to encourage you to stay vigilant as well as get to that victorious goal and celebrate the little wins and those little benchmarks that you make during the process. Trust the process and still just enjoy it. I know I got a little emotional. I didn't actually cry, but I was on the verge (laughs) during this episode because like I said, it was I knew it was going to be the hardest episode I'd ever record going into it today. And I just hope that by being vulnerable and sharing this, vocalizing it with you, that it inspires you as well to keep going down the path that you're trying to and be victorious yourself. If you felt like you got something out of today's episode or you learned something or you just felt inspired from it, please, 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 I would beg that you would share this episode. I didn't become open and honest and vulnerable today for just, you know, two people to listen to it. I feel like today's content is super relevant in today's world, especially for all of us women. We're always there for one another, or we should be. We try to be, especially the other day was International Women's Day. So let's be there for one another. Let's support each other. And please share this episode with your friends, your loved ones, the women in your life. Even if it's just on social media, I would love for you to share this episode. Tag me on both Facebook, Instagram, or just email this episode link to the women in your life that you know need to hear this message. Hey ladies, thanks for listening and we hope you enjoyed today's episode. To help empower more women, please be a doll and rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast. For show notes and other free resources we mentioned today, go to stylebydeidra.com.